I'm Westchester County Executive George Latimer. I'm joined here by uh, Westchester County Legislative Former Board Chairman Mike Kaplowitz, who represents Newcastle uh, in the 4th Legislative District. Uh, our uh, Director of Operations, Joan McDonald, and a number of other uh, executives here. And we're at the home of Jeff Kudak, who was kind enough not only to have us here to tromp all over his beautiful grass, but also to show a noise monitor, which will pick up the sounds of Metro North, <laughs> as well as the Sawmill River, but particularly to help us uh, deal with this issue of uh, overhead air uh, plane noise. And so we appreciate you, Jeff, having us all here today. Welcome. Very briefly, we've talked a lot about issues at the airport and done a variety of different uh, press briefings to talk about different aspects of things that we have to do. Uh, we have uh, most recently talked about some uh, executive orders and legislation we put in effect to reduce uh, and eliminate certain chemicals from being used so that it doesn't leach into the drinking water. Uh, we'll be talking in the next few days about some agreements we've made with the state to lock in the cleanup that's necessary at that location. We've had some public hearings to hear about some of the other different elements of it. But the single biggest issue that we've heard in Chappaqua and Pleasantville in Armonk and a number of other communities is the overhead noise from the planes that travel into Westchester County Airport. Now where we stand today is not right next door to the airport. So when people say, well, you bought a home right next to the airport, what did you expect? That may be true for folks who are much closer to the facility. But the flight paths that uh, are currently in effect have uh, a continual set of uh, airplanes coming over a number of communities that are not particularly close to the airport. And uh, for those homeowners, there's a, there's a noise impact uh, that Jeff will talk about, Mike as a representative of the district will talk about. What we're here to, to show is that we're going to try to do our very best to make a case to the FAA about what the noise problems are. And to do that, we're here to show off our new noise monitoring system uh, and the devices that are here. Joan McDonald uh, is available to talk about it. She has some other uh, staff here that can help reinforce that. But for a long period of time, the county did not have new noise monitoring in effect and did not have that monitoring in effect where the flight paths had been changed a number of years ago. So the data that we have was not helpful uh, in being able to accumulate what we needed to go to the FAA to say we need relief, this is what's happening. So, uh, and, and because we can't always use a public location for noise monitoring, it doesn't pick up the noise that residents are feeling, we need to have residents willing to have this type of equipment on their property, which is an imposition on them, but it also helps us make a case that on the, on the basis of merit that there's a degree of noise that has to be remediated. So uh, what we're seeing here is the beginning of a number of different uh, efforts that we're going to try to make to deal with noise monitoring. We've hired a respected consultant, Harris Miller, Miller & Hansen, to analyze the historic noise data and flight patterns. Their scope of work will be to collect data, prepare a base map, uh, process the information and, and suggest the changes that may be necessary, as well as locating these monitors in the best possible case. When we go to deal with the FAA, we need to go in with facts and figures, not just anecdotal evidence. We have asked the FAA to uh, hold one of their uh, meetings, have some of their executives come out here, and to specifically, we've committed to do that meeting in Chappaqua as an area that has uh, seen the greatest concentration of noise uh, in the flight paths down into the airport. We've got a long way to go. The county government does not directly control the flight paths, therefore we can't directly control the noise in a way where we can give an order, a directive, and that will change. We have some control at the airport on the commercial side, but we don't have control over the general aviation side, and the growth of the airport has been in the general aviation area, the individual planes and jets and so forth that, that have created the high volume of traffic overhead. We also don't control the ability to regulate what kind of noise abatement equipments are on the planes themselves, which is another line of rationale. And in that area, we hope to work with all of the other communities that have airports in their backyards, both in New York State and elsewhere, to try to make a lobbying effort on the federal government to increase what's required for planes to be able to reduce the noise uh, as part of the equipment, not just the routes that they take and, and other things that we have some control over. But it begins with documenting the problem. And no one in the County Board of Legislators has taken more time to do that than my friend Mike Kaplowitz. Mike has served this district for a long period of time, and yet this is a relatively new occurrence for people that are experiencing airport noise that did not historically experience. So I'd like Mike to talk a little bit about uh, what that experience is like in this area, his work to try to identify it, and then we're going to ask, Je uh, ask Jeff to talk in, 
very everyday terms about uh, what this, this noise issue means to him. First, Legislator Mike Kaplowitz. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. This is the best noise we've heard up on this hill in quite some time. Um, this, uh, this is very responsive of the County Executive. Uh, as long as I've represented the 4th District, 22 years, and had Newcastle in it, um, until very recently it was uh, an issue but not overwhelming. But the last couple of years, this has become really issue number one. Uh, perhaps I should pause as the uh, plane goes overhead right on time. Nice job, flight number, wherever you are. And uh, I have been, my office has been um, deluged with uh, noise complaints from very reasonable people who are simply trying to um, spend the day at Commerce or at their home um, going about their daily business. The county executive and I were at a coffee in Newcastle, Trappaqua, um, and Newcastle Town Hall about a year and a half ago. And that was uh, certainly the number one complaint that we heard when, when we were there. And the fact that we're here today is um, a direct linear uh, proof that this county executive's administration are listening, and more than that, are helping to provide the data necessary to see what substantive changes can be made to bring some real relief. Uh, this is unfortunately a bit of a zero-sum game if the flight path moves somewhere else, but there are a lot of ideas that the administration has, but without this data, in fact, you cannot make the solid case to the FAA, and that's what this is. So my thanks as the legislator for Newcastle. Uh, also, Southern York Towns had this problem in the past and other communities as well. And so this noise monitoring uh, system, and particularly at this particular home with the number of planes that have gone overhead, hopefully will ultimately bring some relief. And I can't thank the county executive enough and his administration for listening and being responsive. And I look forward to the day where um, they can come up with whether it's a speed adjustment, altitude adjustment, whether it's less of a shotgun approach to runway 16, or any number of substantive things that can be done, but it starts with today. So, Mr. Latimer, thank you very much for uh, your work. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate it. Jeff, thank you for hosting us and uh, share your thoughts. Uh, well, thank you all. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Latimer. Uh, very simply, about nine months ago, uh, in an evening when it was uh, warm and the windows were open, I just started to notice just how many jets or noise or how many planes were going overhead at 10.30, 11, 11.30 at night. And what do I do? I jump onto Chappaqua Moms because that's what we all do here. <laughs> and I start researching noise complaints on Chappaqua Moms and lo and behold, there's a reference to Susan Spears's number. So at 11.30 at night, I left her a uh, polite message on her voicemail and she calls me back the next day and we have a, uh, a lengthy uh, chat and she explains to me everything she can about what they believe is happening and why there's an increase. And um, she mentioned in passing that the county was picking up some new Air, air noise monitors, and I said, well, if you need a volunteer to have one place somewhere, uh, I guess we'll, we'll break for a moment, hold on. Um, I said I'd be happy to have one on my property. And uh, George, it's not an imposition at all to have it here. As you can see, it's quite small, it's running off of a solar panel, and uh, that's where we are, so hopefully there's nine months of great data at this point that uh, will move the needle a little bit. So again, thank you all. Thank you. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank now keep in mind, for those who are from the press here, we're um, in the middle of the afternoon on a weekday. The, the periods of peak uh, airport um, usage functions very much the way a commuter train station does. There's a lot of activity in the morning. There's a lot of activity in uh, the late evening, and it really uh, pivots around business people that are traveling to and from a destination in the same way that they do at a commuter train station. So you see a lot of flight noise in the morning, and you'll see a lot of flight noise in the evening. You'll also see, and I assume Jeff uh, you know, can attest to this, Friday nights and Sunday nights are high peak periods as well, as you would think. People that may be using uh, airplanes to go back home after a week of work in Westchester, some other location, or people who live in Westchester that will be leaving the area for the weekend and then come back on Sunday night 
or business people that are going to be in Westchester for the following week, and they arrive back on Sunday night. So you might stand here at a certain time of the day, certain time of the week, and not get much traffic, or what doesn't seem to be oppressive traffic. But in those periods of times, early in the morning, late in the evening, not late, late in the evening, uh, that reflect a commuter reality, and a Friday night and a Sunday night, and holidays obviously fall into that category as well, very much so. A Monday holiday, Memorial Day holiday, 4th of July uh, is not on a Monday, but, but holiday traffic would increase the amount of air traffic that's overhead. And there's another factor which we'll build into whatever our discussions are, and that's the wind currents. And as the wind currents move in one direction or not, they, the air traffic controllers will try to uh, centralize a particular uh, path and on those days when the wind is blowing in a certain way and they centralize a path, if that path is above us here, then it won't be one or two that we've had so far. It would be a, a, a conga line of planes coming one after the other after the other so that you would see what makes it so difficult for a homeowner or a neighbor to, to in peaceably enjoy their, their property. Now, I, I do want actually Joan McDonald to come to the microphone and talk a little bit. The structure of the county government in terms of dealing with these things is we contract with Avports which is a subsidiary of Goldman Sachs, to physically run the airport. Uh, it is our um, uh, transportation component within the DPW department, Department of D Com uh, Commissioner of DPW, that is responsible for airport-related issues. That individual, Hugh Grecian, who's head of our DPW department, reports to Joan. So Joan has been the point person on, on all of these issues. When we deal with some issues uh, where we have to have a legal element to it, then John Nona, our county attorney, gets involved. Uh, and you may see Hugh uh, involved as well. The Airport Advisory Board, we have both Susan Spear and Aviva Meyer that are regular attendees there, and they try to help deal with the issues that arise from that Citizens Board. But Joan is the point person on these issues as comes into the Executive Chamber. I want her to sort of outline a little bit of your circumstances. Sure. Thanks, George. I, I think what's important to note here is that up until last summer, uh, the county had uh, the permanent noise monitoring system and because of that we were not able as a county to respond to individual homeowners or clusters of communities to, to get a real uh, analysis of what the noise was and we put our heads together at, at George's direction and working with Avports and, and purchased the 10 portable noise monitors that you see here. And that, that's very important because that allows us to A, be responsive to the, to the homeowners, be responsive to the communities, but more importantly to talk, to have a constructive dialogue after we accumulate the data with the FAA on the flight patterns. So uh, FAA dictates what the flight patterns are, come, you know, both ascending and descending. But without the data, we would not be able to have that conversation with the FAA about whether there's the potential to change those patterns. And, and having this data will be very, very important to us. Uh, the study, the, the consultant that uh, George mentioned, HMMFH, uh, will be looking at historical data so that we have the prospective data, which will be um, you know, going forward from October when we put the, the portable noise monitor here, but also the historical data from the permanent uh, noise monitoring system so that we can see a comparison. How, have, uh, how has the noise increased? How has that changed over time? Again, so that we can have that productive conversation with the FAA uh, that that really is the final arbiter about whether what the flight pattern is and which with the tra air traffic controllers which direction uh, the pa the the flight paths go in. So we're we're looking forward to looking at the historical data and working with our consultant analyzing what uh, what information we get from these uh, portable air monitors. Thanks. So before we go to questions, just one other point about the financing of these things. Westchester County um, Airport operates as the equivalent of an enterprise fund where revenues and profits that are generated from within the airport stay within the airport, cannot be used to fund other parts of county government. Uh, and in the same fashion, spending that we do at the airport uh, almost always does not involve separate tax levy. 
So when somebody says, how is this being paid for? This is being paid for by the profit that is made at the airport through the variety of fees that exist and operational costs at the airport. So these monitors, as well the cleanup costs uh, that I alluded to uh, for what we have to do environmentally, all come out of uh, the airport process. You've heard over the years proposals to change the governance of the airport that, that would allow some of that profit to go to the county government, but all of those things at this point would be prospective Right now, we're operating under the system that we have for the last number of years. So the affordable nature of these things are funded through the airport funding, and that's how we've been able to do it. And let me finally say that Mike, uh, as a leader of the Board of Legislators, has been essential in these things happening. In everything that we do, and I'm a former member of the legislature, we actually served together uh, for a number of years uh, at the very end of my tenure in the county, that we're, we're doing this with the, ins, uh, the, the um, influence and the input of the Board of Legislators. This is not just executive branch initiatives. This is done in cooperation with the legislative branch. And, and we think that's very important because what you're watching in Washington and other levels of government is a constant conflict between executive and legislative branches. What we're trying to do is work both branches together to find solutions to problems or at least have a pathway to a solution. So with that thought in mind, I'll stop talking, blessedly I'm sure, and open it up to any questions you have for myself for Mike, Joan, or Jeff, uh, as you see fit. And then you're welcome to interview any of us individually once uh, the formal general questions and answers are done. Uh, so any questions, yes? The contract for the consultant, how much is that for the, the how much is the consultant been hired for? And I know it's paid for through the, from the airport, as you mentioned before. The, the it, it's capped at $200,000, and they've, uh, they've outlined what the various uh, components are, and it's a time and material contract, so it's whatever their time is to do data collection to do the historical uh, review and the analysis and write up reports. So that's how we manage it. One thing I was going to ask too is a follow-up is how will the new noise monitors fit in? How does it all fit together? In other words, are they going to, first of all, are the other nine out in the field? Are they at, at other homes or other in, in other communities or all in one? Se seven of the ten are in the field. And again, the reason we bought the portable was so that we could move them. Uh, the reason all 10 are not deployed is we, we're doing them, this is more of a kind of a reactive proactive. We, we've had them at some residences and uh, a couple people were putting their houses on the market and didn't want the air monitors on the property when they were putting their houses on the market. But, but that is exactly, uh, you know, why we have them as portable. So we could, we could move around the county and put them at locations where the requests came in. And, and what we will do when we, and what the consultant will do is we will look at site specific, but then they will be the, the experts to help us tie it together when we meet with FAA on what the flight patterns are. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at the noise, the results from these, like this monitor here, and then see what it was. Right, all, right. And then look at the historical monitoring too. Exactly. And then then exactly. Now, now the, the historical will be from the permanent because that's the only data that we have. So when you say out in the field, do you mean at residences or? It's primarily at residences, but uh, again, if a uh, if a if a small business or a, or or a neighborhood or a business association said they would like us to uh, to put one in there, it's it's uh, we we again it's it's the responsive to the community and to the the residents of Westchester County. It's where we put them. And sorry if this was mentioned, but the time frame, like how long does Jeff have to have this here, and then how long? Do the, do the consultants want all of them out in the field for? You know, that each this one's been out since October. Um, a good rule of thumb is between six months and a year's worth of data, so we can we can analyze it. Um, they're going to do the, 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 the retrospective. They're going to do that in the next three to six months, so we can have uh, a good productive dialogue with, uh, uh, with the FAA uh, early in the fall about what, what some potentials might be. I'm not exactly sure of that, but uh, the, the thing that I am sure of is that technology changes daily, and what we want to make sure is that we have the best in class. Our, our permanent system is 20 years old, and it is, it is very outdated, and I think it's analog versus uh, wireless. So those are, in addition to looking at the data, 
Um, the consultant is going to take a look at what some of the best in class around the country um, systems are for making sure we get the most accurate uh, data when we when we replace the permanent system. So the permanent system was it all? Is it all located in one spot? What's the advantage of having these out in the field? Would you say? Is it, is uh, the, well, the, well, the permanent. I don't have. We can get you where the permanent noise monitors are, but but the fact that they're permanent, they're fixed, so they're not they're not portable. So that's why, under the county executive's direction, we decided it would make a lot of good sense to get these portable monitors. And the important thing to keep in mind is that there's been a change in patterns. Mike alluded right. to this that that the complaints that have occurred have occurred in relatively, I'm sorry, uh, there's been a change in patterns in within the last three to four years. Uh, when I served in the county legislature and Mike first began, the complaints that we had pivoted around Rye Brook, Harrison, certain areas that were much closer to the airport, and the patterns were different. When those patterns changed, the, the, the fixed locations of those other noise monitors were no, no longer tracking what was happening under the new uh, structure of, uh, of patterns, of uh, flight patterns. So uh, to have the mobile uh, units now gives us much greater flexibility. And just back to Ali's point, the, what we're looking for is an annual picture of what happens. A, a Wednesday in, in June is not the same as a Wednesday in December. So you want to have it in a location long enough to see what are not just the weekly patterns from a Sunday through a Sunday, but what are the patterns seasonally uh, throughout the course of the year and then you can draw some judgments uh, on the basis of what kind of uh, flight uh, demand there is at certain times of the year and how it how it tracks the noise that follows it. Is there an element of this though that you know we're going to see that it's very noisy we've been here there's planes flying over every 10 minutes or so uh, maybe worse at other times um, but then let's say we say it's really noisy here and they change the, the flight pattern and it's really noisy somewhere else What's the ultimate solution? Well, what's implicit in your question is that we would change it and just take all the noise here and immediately put it someplace else. What Mike alluded to are different policies that the FAA could, in, could put in force which diffuses the noise. There would still be some here, but not the full amount that there is here. And in another place where there's this much noise, there might be a little more noise, but not the full amount that's here. And you take the same amount and you spread it out. It's like taking 10 marbles and you have them in two piles of five. You take the same 10 marbles and you put them in eight piles and in no one of those piles does it reach a point of, of frustration. That's the concept behind trying to advocate for changes. And it's not just the routes, the paths that I've alluded to. Mike made a very important point and that's the altitude at which planes take off and even more importantly land. The lower they are to the ground, the more you hear noise on the ground. Now whether or not the FAA will agree to having different types of um, you know, altitude uh, targets. When a plane comes in, they may come in and come down like this. They may come down like this and then go a little lower before they land, or they may come in a little more steeper at the end. All of that is within the FAA's control, but the data that we have will give them enough information that hopefully they'll be able to say, well, we could do these two or three things, and that would reduce the burden that Jeff has. Somebody else might have a little more increased burden, but it wouldn't necessarily come to the level that Jeff has now. And that's how you spread it out in a way that's more acceptable. Yeah, Please do, yeah. So the, another supplement tool that we have is there's been a recent study that shows that approach speed has a great correlation to noise. And one of the things that with this information, perhaps an opportunity to work with the FAA and the airlines to slow down the approach and demonstrably slow down the noise. So there are any number of techniques the county executive mentioned, but it starts with the data. It starts with the data, and um, that's what we need, we need to be able to employ then some of the potential solutions. The, the other six of the seven are deployed, including so where, what communities or what municipalities are the other six in? Uh, I don't have that with me right now, but we're ha we'll be happy to, to email it to you or get it to you. I'll get you the list. Yeah. Also, I was going to ask, like, I, I don't know if this is true, but I think we're going to look at something, the consultant is going to look at something uh, like where the planes are actually coming from. Is it all Westchester County, or is it or is that a part of this too? Are they gonna are they gonna be able to measure in a way they haven't before where the planes destination origin and destination are? Are they all going? Is it really all Westchester County? That, that you know that that is a good question because because <coughs> uh, because we're also in the flight pattern of of LaGuardia. So um, I don't know if they're going to be able to get into that level of breakdown, 
but that that definitely will be part of the uh, the discussion with uh, with the FAA. If it's not part of this study, we'll get we'll get data from uh, from LaGuardia to do the side by side. And, and I do think it's important to note that accurately, so there are other communities in Westchester that have airplane noise because of LaGuardia bound flights. Mm -hmm. Down along the Sound Shore, particularly in the Larchmont and sections of New Rochelle, you will have homeowners that have some of the same concerns that you have in Chappaqua, Pleasantville, Armonk, and so forth. In that case, we're dealing with LaGuardia flight paths, and of course, we don't, you know, we, we don't have direct influence over LaGuardia. So their efforts generally channel through the members of Congress and the United States Senate. Uh, to try to track those things down. And of course, you know, you're hearing about uh, you know, noise problems everywhere. You go just to Google up right now, you'll see there's efforts at JFK by the neighbors around JFK uh, with the uh, reconstruction of LaGuardia. People who live in the vicinity of LaGuardia are having frustrations. This is not a Westchester County only thing, clearly. This is something that's nationwide. And that's why I think in the long run, the solution is going to be a technological solution of how you make the intrinsic plane quieter how you make the jet engines quieter. Now, I suspect it makes, the jet it makes the jet planes costlier to build. And it also creates a situation where you have grandfathered equipment that still wants to operate for the life of the equipment, but it's noisy today and it'll be noisy for the next seven years that it's in operation. So those are all the kind of issues that our members of Congress have to deal with uh, to the extent that uh, you know, the, the Washington administration wants to deal with these issues. But I think we're doing what we can do at the county level within the controls that we have, and that's what you know, this effort is about. Uh, have, uh, is there going to be an effort to compare the points at which the aircraft have come in under this uh, one, one six approach? Um, to the noise levels. Yes. Right. Well, that that is the purpose of the study, John, to, to determine all of those kind of facts. Mike again put in speed as an issue, altitude as an issue, uh, angle of approach to the runway. These are all issues, and that's what hopefully the data will uh, will tell us. You know. Everybody knows when you get mixed data like this, you're going to see a lot of things in it. It's not going to clearly say, oh, the smoking gun is clearly this. And if we did this one thing, that would correct everything. And the things we're talking about here doesn't deal with other elements of problems here. We have flights that come in after the voluntary curfew. That's not about how low they fly or how fast they fly. That's about the time that they fly. And so that becomes a question of des uh, you know, point of origination. And of course, the destination for our purposes being Westchester County Airport. So the consultant is going to look at those broad based issues to the extent they can. And then we're going to determine what policies we control and then what policies we have to advocate for. And, and I think, you know, you recognize that the biggest important thing to grasp, and John, you've covered a number of these press conferences, is this administration and this legislature is engaged in these issues. We're not turning our back on it, we're not saying, well, you know, what are you going to do? It's the FAA. We only have a little bit of power. I'm sorry, Jeff. Kind of, you know, tough darts. Uh, we're trying to figure out what can we do proactively to make the situation better. Will it be perfect? No, it's not going to be perfect because we don't control the skies. But we're going to try to get data, information, and be good, strong advocates. And I might add, as the Board of Legislators and Mike has been an advocate, so have the members of the Newcastle Town Board. Uh, they, they have, uh, you know, made this case. You have Bob Fleischer, who we appointed to serve on the airport advisory Re board, county's airport advisory board, at the request of the Newcastle board, uh, town board, and, and his presence is something we didn't have before. We didn't have advocates coming from the community sitting on the AAB. So all of those are steps in a direction that we hope will, will bring some fruit to them. So any final questions as a group before we go to any other individual ones? Yes. Well, that, that, that certainly is something that might discourage a certain amount of traffic from coming in, and I, and I think that's something that, that we will probably see ultimately um, put into effect. But I have to tell you, for the very reason why people move to Westchester County, because of the quality of living here, that's exactly why they fly into Westchester County. The convenience of flying in and out of an airport that's near where you live is a great advantage. It's part of our economic development strategy that we have an airport. It helps us retain certain businesses and uh, individuals, particularly high wealth individuals who live in some of the most highly taxed properties here are the ones that they themselves choose to fly 
when they can when when they can afford to do that, which is really almost any time that they choose to. They don't have to wait for a commercial setting. This airport has a certain number of commercial flights that go to a certain number of cities. And if you want to go to Cleveland, there's no flight commercial flight to Cleveland, but you can uh, charter a jet or be part of one of those multiple seat charters. Uh, you go to Cleveland when you want to. And people like that in Westchester and Fairfield look at the airport that way. So we have to remember that we're trying to balance these things out in a way that protects the homeowner and then protects the people of Westchester who use the airport. It's not, you know, it's not simply just do this one thing, but this is a step in that direction. So the, is the consultant definitely going to look at the radar patterns? Yes. Yes. That is within the scope of that is within the scope of their work. And obviously when the report comes out, we're going to share it with you in the press. So you'll be able to go through with a fine tooth comb. I assume we'll have a press mm -hmm. conference at the appropriate time. <coughs> we'll bring the consultant up to the microphone to answer any of those detailed questions once the report is done. Well, it's heavily redacted, but it will be yes, it'll be redacted, no <laughs> doubt. I think in the fall you said they had the problem. Okay. Yes, sir. I was just gonna check on when they estimated is there an estimated time of completion for the consultant to do their study? Yeah, sometime in the oh, fall. fall. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right, with that, uh, we, we want to uh, thank Jeff for uh, being hospitable, again, letting him trump all over his grass. And uh, if there are other individual uh, conversations you want to have with each of us, feel free. Jeff, this is your more than your 15 minutes. Be my guest, Mike and Joan.